Good morning and welcome to Florida Tech. We appreciate you being here. I am Wes Sumner, Vice President for Marketing and Communications. And as we get rolling, I'd like to introduce the front table to you. Of course, to my immediate left, the President of the Florida Institute of Technology, Dr. Anthony Cadenese. He is, of course, joined by Coach Steve Englehart, Dr. T. Dwayne McKay, our Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Mr. John Thomas, our Director of Football Operations, and Mr. Bill Jurgens, our Athletic Director at Florida Tech. So that you know uh, the order of operation for this morning, uh, the President will, of course, welcome uh, us and kick us off here in a moment. Coach Englehart will speak, others will speak, and we'll hold questions, please, until the very end. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Cadenese. Uh, thanks, Wes. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, Florida Tech is a uh, Tier 1 national research university known for its quality teaching, research, and public service. So why are we so interested in athletics? Uh, because we believe in the, in the full college experience, of which intercollegiate athletics is a major component. So we're adding to our athletic programs uh, for improve the quality of life for our students, for our alumni, uh, for our faculty and staff, and for the community and the region. Uh, we now have 20 sports, and now our 21st sport uh, will be football, intercollegiate football. And some people say, well, why football? Um, well, I guess the simple answer is we're in Florida. <laughs> That's what we do in Florida. We play football. Uh, but it's also, I think, one of the oldest collegiate sports, uh, one that probably is unique in America. Uh, throughout the world, people marvel at how much attention we play, pay to uh, intercollegiate football in this country. Okay, we're going to start football. We decided to do this uh, last year, and we've been uh, making progress uh, on football. Let me just tell you a couple of updates. Uh, I think we're now beginning to uh, get our uh, infrastructure in place. Uh, physically, we're probably going to practice at uh, Melbourne Central Catholic, and we really want to thank them for their wonderful cooperation in the sharing arrangements that we have for their uh, extraordinarily uh, fine facilities. Uh, we will probably play our games at either Palm Bay High School or uh, Melbourne High School, uh, which has a very large seating capacity, and we'd be delighted if we can um, fill those seats uh, for our games. Uh, we're still wondering and uh, evaluating and uh, analyzing how we're going to play, whether we become an independent college team, uh, because, as you know, we're in the Sunshine State Conference, a Division II conference, and uh, we are not going to leave that conference, uh, but they don't play football in the Sunshine State Conference. So that means we either have to be independent. Uh, another more remote possibility is that we can uh, be an AIA in football only, which gives us a whole range of options. And then the newest development is that the Gulf South Conference, uh, which is uh, composed primarily of Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, and one Louisiana team, uh, has also expressed interest in Florida Tech uh, possibly becoming a member of their football-only division. So we're going to explore that. We will have their commissioner uh, visit um, our campus. Uh, we, um, we also said that we we're not going to pay for football uh, 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 using tuition. Uh, we go to the private people in this community, uh, private organizations, and raise the money externally. And uh, so far, we've raised over half a million dollars from private gifts. And we consider that just the beginning as to the kind of money we believe we need uh, to get a quality football program and to maintain our academic standards. So today we introduce you uh, to our coach. And uh, let me just say a few things there. Uh, our, um, uh, our criteria were primarily someone who understands technology universities because that's a special group of uh, uh, football programs, and uh, yes, MIT does have a football uh, team. Uh, so does Georgia Tech, but that's a different story. Uh, we uh, uh, we want someone who really believes in academics, and uh, someone who had a good a good record, quite frankly. Uh, and it sort of brought me back to when I was a member of the NCAA Commission, and you were assigned mentors. And my mentor was uh, Father Theodore Hesburgh, uh, a legendary president of Notre Dame who uh, had an interest in football. And uh, Father Hesburgh, uh, I said, well, Father, what, what should I do? He said, well, the most important thing is when you hire coaches. 
Uh, he said, what you've got to do is find a coach who really cares about the students and really cares about their academic progress as much as their athletic progress. Uh, you've got to find a coach who's honest, has high integrity, and is loyal and committed to the university. And then when you find that coach, uh, you give them the NCAA rule book, and you say, coach, you've got to follow all these rules. And uh, by the way, coach, it would be nice if you could win most of your games. <laughs> so, so I took Father Hesburgh's uh, advice to heart, and uh, I think we've, uh, we've found that, that man. Uh, we had a lot of interest in this position. Uh, there were well, well over 100 uh, very serious uh, applicants. But we think with uh, Coach Engelhardt's experience, uh, especially at Rose Holman, which is, you know, has some of the characteristics uh, of Florida Tech, and then, of course, his uh, Indiana State uh, experience in offense and then his playing days as a quarterback, uh, you know, as a former safety, I don't think much of quarterbacks. But nonetheless, uh, we'll go with a, with a quarterback. And, um, and just one other point, uh, since his picture was shown uh, on campus and in Florida today, a lot of young women on campus have said, wow, we're going to be a lot more interested in football than we had been. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Coach Engelhardt is married, has three lovely children, and uh, he's going to be very loyal to his family as well. So I'm delighted to uh, introduce to you the uh, new head football coach, Florida Tech, Stephen R. Engelhardt. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Um, I, I feel uh, extremely blessed and excited uh, for this great opportunity, uh, and I want to thank uh, President Catanese for this opportunity. Um, I find it to be very special and I think that we could build something very special here at Florida Tech. Uh, when I came here on my interview, I was extremely impressed with the family type of atmosphere that exists here. Um, and, and I tell you, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about building the family. And when we start this program, uh, our team and our, our, our players, uh, one of the expectations will be uh, will be family, and it will be caring about one another and caring about one another's successes, and, and that's what uh, and that's what we'll be about. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Executive Bi Vice President Dr. McKay. I, I really enjoyed uh, talking with him uh, on my interview. You know, one thing that he said that really stuck out, um, and I will my message to the football team will mirror this, um, is the fact that uh, here at Florida Tech, uh, we're interested in developing. Uh, De developing citizens of the world, great citizens of the world. And to me, that was, uh, you know, it really, it really struck me and got me excited and, and, uh, and, and fired up. So um, my message to my football team will mirror that. I'd also like to thank uh, John Thomas uh, and his staff um, because they put together a great foundation already um, in regards to the recruiting and the interest level uh, here in Brevard County and, all, and the entire state of Florida. Um, because of that foundation, I think that we'll be able to build a uh, very strong program here uh, in a short period of time. And also, uh, Athletic Director Bill, Bill Jurgens, once again, uh, what he's done with athletic departments uh, here in, in, his, uh, in his time has been amazing, and, and I think football is the next, uh, the next step to that. And, uh, and it's, been, uh, it's been fun uh, this last week. It's been a whirlwind, but it's been fun. So... Uh, other things I'd like to add, um, first off, I, I mentioned I'm a, I'm a family man, and I do have to thank my family. Uh, my wife, Carrie, and I have lived in Indiana our entire life, and, um, you know, for her to, to give me the support and, uh, and uh, I guess, love me enough to, uh, to travel across the, across the country with me a thousand miles uh, south here to Florida uh, really means a lot. I have three children, a 10-month-old uh, daughter who, who won't know any of this, but my, my two boys are 10 and 7, and they have a lot of friends, and uh, um, I'm, I've been extremely impressed with how brave and how, uh, how interested they are to move to Florida. And we were talking earlier, um, it, it, it helps because I could bribe them with Mickey Mouse and the beach, so, uh, so, so that'll be fun. Um, when we start this program here uh, at Florida Tech, once again, we're going to build it with, with men of character. And we're going to recruit men of character uh, th that care about one another, and the education is, is the number one thing for them. Uh, we have to build this program on education, and, and uh, the men that we bring in here, the young men that we bring in here, 
uh, will never sacrifice our academic integrity. And, and I think that we can do that, um, especially uh, if we can build a fence uh, around the state of Florida. We all know that, Florida li or that football lives in Florida. And um, we can keep these young men here at home in the state of Florida. And once again, because of our academic reputation here, we'll be able to go um, select and, and, and really identify great men in other states, great young men in other states that also um, that have great academic uh, futures ahead of them and we'll be able to attract you know, some of the best student athletes in other states as well because of our academic reputation. And I'm excited to get started. Um, I will say that, that uh, this will be a process um, with us not starting uh, until 2013. We need all the community support that we can get right now. And, uh, and I challenge the community to, to help however you can to be a part of the football uh, family here at Florida Tech. Um, and also, uh, we're going to need the help of, of the high school coaches uh, here in the state of Florida. And my job over the next uh, week, uh, first off, I'm going to contact every student athlete uh, that uh, Ray Herring, uh, 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 also a, uh, is from Melbourne, uh, so um, very lucky to have him a part of this staff. Uh, but he was able to, to bring in. Uh, 45 recruits, uh, you know, so far, and that just goes to show uh, what what Florida Tech football can be. You know, they're not playing until 2013, and we had 45 recruits uh, uh, ready to to jump uh, jump all in. So um, I'll be contacting them over the next couple of days, and then uh, over the next week, I plan on calling every uh, every football coach, every high school football coach in the state of Florida, and try to start to build those connections. So. I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'm ready to hit the ground running. So thank you very much. Yeah, I, I have one comment, and that is I've had several people ask me, why so soon? You know, as, as, as Steve pointed out, we don't play football to 2013. And the reason is, is because... Actually, I think it's 46, right, Ray, uh, student-athletes that we have coming to play football. And I didn't believe that, that Ray and John could recruit students two years downstream. And so they did an incredible thing, and they deserve, even though it is a little earlier than we planned, to, have, to know who their head football coach is. And I am just I'm very excited the fact that not only do they know, uh, we know, and, it, and we're so excited to have Coach Englehart mm -hmm. here to be the first head football coach at Florida Tech. Okay, I think we'll open it up for questions. Two things. First of all, what is the status of the negotiations, if there are negotiations with MCC for that purchase? Um, those are ongoing, but right now we've reached an agreement with them, a formal agreement to use all of their athletics facilities, uh, primarily for uh, lacrosse, football, and track and field. And in return, we're going to give some advantages to their students being able to take so-called dual enrollment courses at Florida Tech. So right now it's a win-win situation, and uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens with the purchase. We're still interested, and we'll keep talking to the bishop. Uh, but right now, the facilities part is done, and that, that makes us both happy. <laughs> Secondly, this is the second time around now after Atlantic, and I realize you've still got two years to go. Compare the experience that launched the Atlantic program to what you've experienced so far. It was Steve's much younger than Howard Schnellenberger. <laughs> <laughs> Better looking, too. <laughs> Uh, so it's really quite a difference. So here with Steve, we have somebody who's just starting and on his way up, and, and with Schnellenberg, we had somebody who knew everything there was to know about college football. Uh, but in many ways, it's the same thing, Mark. Uh, we have to go out and raise money, and we have a start, but we still have to do more of that. Uh, we have to develop, a, frankly, a, a, a program. And, uh, and one of the things I told Steve was that, you know, this is your chance of a lifetime. You do it your way. Uh, you know, these are this is your offense. This is your defense. These are your players. This is your team, and um, so that's the good news. The bad news is it's all your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Steve. To, to follow on to that, can you two years out and just with your first class recruits, what 
there's so much work to do. I mean, when will, in this process, will you actually sit down and start doing X's and O's? Well, I, I, first off, the process is, is going to take, obviously, some time. Um, but I live in, um, you know, I have a motto that I go by, and the most important day is today. So I, I'm going to worry about today, and every day I wake up, we're going to do whatever we can that day to move this program forward. As far as X and O's, I have, I have general philosophies that, that I believe on X's and O's and, and offense and defense. So um, as long as my staff, when I look to hire a staff, you know, there's a lot of great coaches out there, and there's a lot of great coaches I know that, that know X's and O's. But first and foremost, they have to fit what Florida Tech is about. And when we can do that, um, then the X's and O's will come. You know, uh, I, I don't talk a lot about X's and O's. I don't talk a lot about winning and lo losing, to be honest with you. I talk about doing things the right way and preparing to be a winner. If we can prepare to be a winner every single day, uh, you know, then, then we'll be much, uh, much more successful, I believe. And could you expound a little bit on what your, your X's and O's philosophies are on both sides of the ball? Yeah, sure. Uh, to be honest, they're very similar. Uh, they're um, offensively and defensively. I want to be multiple. You know, um, uh, I like to call it, I guess, the 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 spread coast offense. You know, in the old term, the West Coast offense, but the, the, with a lot of spread influences. So, uh, you know, that's that's really what we're going to be able to to use. And the reason why I use that is because your personnel changes from year to year. Um, you know, you have to have uh, an offense that is going to fit with your personnel, I believe, and, and sure you can recruit to what you want to do, uh, but you're still going to you're still going to have players that that are more of a superstar in different positions. So we can be able to do that defensively. Once again, I, I like a multiple defense. I like showing a lot of looks. Um, I think with the with the type of young men that we'll get here, um, I think that they will be able to retain information. You know, we're, we're going to get we're going to get smart young men here. They'll be able to retain a lot of information. And we could give them a lot of information. <laughs> uh, we'll be able to give them a lot of information and be able to do a lot of different things, and that's going to make our opponent have to prepare for a lot of different things and probably make them a little more basic. And once again, I realize you're still two years out, but will you be the offensive coordinator as well as head coach, or are you going to hire coordinators? I'll hire coordinators, yes. And how do you resist the temptation of being a former quarterback and being a former coordinator and then looking over your offense? Well, yeah, yeah, you have great people with you, and you have to you have to have trust. Um, you know, one of the one of the big things that I'll talk with our players about on a daily basis is trust. We have to trust each other, and that's that staff has to trust each other. Staff has to trust players to get the job done, and the players have to trust the coaches, and and players have to trust each other. You know, so it's going to be about trust, and and the people that I hire, I'll, I'll trust, and uh, I'm not a micromanager. I'm gonna I'm gonna let them. Um, you know, do as long as it fits what my philosophies are. That, you know, then I'm okay with I'm okay with what we're going to do. I have faith in that, that I'll hire good people. Other questions? Yeah, Dan. Hello. This is uh, for the doctor and also for Coach. Um, when you're talking about the beginning of a program, how do you really go to the community face to face and say we're starting a football? We want you to be on board. And how do you convince them to come out on game day and even non-game day, coming to different events and really the culture behind college football? How do you convince uh, an area like this, which really hasn't experienced it to that degree? How do you tell them that it's going to be a success? Yeah, we're going to do it just like I did at Florida Atlantic University. The coach and I are going to go to people directly, and we're going to tell them about football at Florida Tech. And we're going to ask them to support us. We're going to ask them to come to the games to uh, continue their support and tell them how important it is for Florida Tech and for this region. But as you know, Dan, it's such a, this is such a, as the coach said, such a hotbed of football, especially with our high schools in this region. Uh, I think it'll be a lot easier here than it would be in other places because there's such great interest already. And um, I'll tell you the truth, we've probably received, you know, Sorry, Bill, we've received more attention about this sport than anything else we do. I mean, we're going to the Henley Regatta next week, and I got a little notice, uh, but football gets a lot of attention. So I think we got a, 
the right setting for football. And uh, it's, it's just old-fashioned blocking and tackling. That's all where you go one-on-one -on -one and meet with people and get their support and get corporate support. And uh, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get it because, as I say, we're already off to a fairly good start. You know, I'll say that we're going to get community support because we're going to support the community as well. My, my, when, when my team comes in here, these 46, thank you, 46, uh, when they come in here in the fall, um, those players are going to be involved in the community right away. You know, we'll, we'll be out uh, doing community service. The community is going to see their face, and, uh, and I think that that's going to once again uh, promote the family atmosphere here at Florida Tech, and people want to be a part of that. Yeah. And, you know, Dan, not to overplay it, but there is an economic development aspect here, too. Um, you know, one of the conferences we're looking at does have a television contract. Obviously, when you bring teams, football teams, tend to be very large. They fill a lot of hotel beds. They go to restaurants. They bring fans. So there's a certain amount of economic development that can be related to college football as well. I've got one for John. John, how soon in the process can you begin to actually do organized activities without being in violation of any compliance or eligibility for these kids? As far as, or as far as community involvement? No, as far as actually uh, actual football. They're not, we're not going to do any football until 2012. Okay. And the, will that be spring practice in 2012? No, fall of 2012. We'll actually start doing football. We're going to be able to do, do and, you know, be able to work out and do strength and conditioning, um, you know, the next year while they're attending class. But we won't do any football until 2012. And have you guys looked at uniforms, colors, designs, or anything else? Or is that all up to the team? That's up to the coach. <laughs> I look forward to doing that. It'll be fun. <laughs> they bring in a couple of these women in here for some design ideas. <laughs> no frills, though. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I must tell you, just a funny little aside. Uh, when I was at Florida Atlantic University, I remember Sarah and I were hardly wait to see the coach was going to have an unveiling party and the, the colors of Florida Atlantic were uh, blue and gray, uh, something about the Civil War. And when the coach unveiled his uniforms, they were red, white, and blue. So uh, we'll see what color your uniforms are going to be. <laughs> they won't be blue or green. <laughs> Uh, because we want Florida Tech to be a school that a lot of people associate with football. <laughs> and uh, we think that it's something that the students have wanted. Um, we've got tremendous, uh, for example, the student newspaper was tremendously supportive of the idea. As a matter of fact, to a certain extent, they've been pushing it for a number of years. Uh, we've met many students who've said, you know, I'd love to come to Florida Tech, but you don't have football at the undergraduate level. And, and we just think that football is part of the collegiate experience. If only had football, we'd come. So we, we, we think this adds to the quality of life for our undergraduates as well as the alumni. And, and to alumni, this is really important because, you know, we just hired our first member of the National Academy of Engineering. And, you know, I'm sure some alumni talk to that. But the day we beat MIT, now they're really going to talk about that. So it, it's, it's part of college life in America. Kind of like Bill and Green, if you build it, they will come. And they will. <laughs> For the football team? Yes. Uh, United Way w was the major one, and, and we've actually already done that with our teams. Uh, we also did a lot of work with Habitat for Humanity, with Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Uh, we do a lot of work with uh, American Cancer Society, uh, American Heart Association, and we'll probably continue uh, that tradition. But even aside from athletics, uh, this place amazes me because even though there's only about 25% of our students are actually from Florida, uh, we consistently won the President's Gold Medal for public service. So the kids here at Florida Tech get involved in community activities because they want to, and uh, it's just a constant source of amazement to me, and our athletes lead the way. We did many of the same things at, at, uh, at Indiana State and at Rose Holman. Uh, Rose Holman, uh, we did a, a, a deal, Bikes for Tykes, and our fundraise and all that type of stuff, and, and they, they people purchased bikes and then our football team helped 
put all the bikes together, and then they delivered them. There was 400 and some bikes, uh, you know, during Christmas time. So, you know, things like that, um, you know, reading to, to elementary age kids, uh, sending a couple uh, football players uh, throughout the, you know, throughout the the week at different times, going into to elementary uh, classrooms and reading to them uh, to promote the importance of education and reading. So that, that there's there's a lot of community things that we can get out and do. On the uh, field house, where, where does that stand? Still, still raising money for the field house. <laughs> okay. Okay. One more question, if you have. Okay, and we'll conclude the Q&A portion of our program this morning. And Athletic Director Bill Jurgen has a presentation to finish this out. I'll come forward here. Steve, if you could uh, come forward also. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Florida Tech family and welcome you to Florida Tech Athletics. All right. It's going to be a great undertaking, and I think we have the right person in you. Oh, thank you very much. Quarterbacks have bigger, quarterbacks have bigger heads. <laughs> Thank you all very much.